And welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is political correctness. So we get to look at the, the social pressures to um, kind of toe the popular line and the consequences of um, speaking out and, and self-censorship. So should be a stimulating conversation. You know me, I like to poke the bear. So uh, before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding into your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any negativity, stress, fatigue, tension. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, energizing, electrifying all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, lighting you up from the inside out. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining stress, tension, negativity, fatigue. And now let's just gently press our palms together. Softly, softly, softly rub your fingers against your palms to feel the deliciousness of that sensation and to bring you present right here, right now in these wonderful bodies that we have to live through. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, today we get to talk about political correctness and um, what, what does that look like? You know, I, I think uh when in, in a in a an increasingly polarized culture about so many things uh we often find ourselves walking a tightrope and self-censoring um because there is danger to um to speaking out sometimes because if we speak out then we incur the wrath of of uh, masses of people known or unknown potentially and um, one of the things that we talk about a lot is finding a way to hold ideas with open hand and um I think that we get to embrace this evolutionary possibility for ourselves and our culture. Good, good afternoon, Pat. So good to have you here with us. Welcome, welcome. We're talking today about political correctness and, and the choice that we make oftentimes to self-center, uh, self-censor. Uh, or to be very careful about our words. I know that there have been certain topics that we've brought up in this venue that I have been very cautious about um, the way that I speak of them. And uh, part of it is not just self-censoring, but um, a concern about actual censoring. You know, that there is a bunch of censorship that is occurring uh, these days, and um, that in itself is a concern. So we're, we're walking a delicate line, uh, so many of us, um, and, and I think that when that is the case, we get to look at what it takes to entertain viewpoints that don't agree with our own and um, building bridges, you know, holding, holding both and, and um, to recognize that things are not necessarily black and white. And um, I think that we get to acclimate ourselves more to nuance, to communicating more deeply, more effectively. Um, I have 
a friend who, um, yeah, I don't know if I can even, I, I don't know if I can discuss this really. Um, yeah, so here I am right in the midst of this self-censorship, you know, like determining, trying to determine what what is okay to say and what isn't okay to say if I want this this post to remain available to you. So um, I, I I just have a growing concern about what's happening in in um, our ability to have choice and to communicate our well-considered decisions. Uh, let's just talk about diet, for example. You know, if, if um, I guess there are nutritional guidelines that are published by the government. And um, so many of us have done all kinds of research about nutrition and about different uh, ways of nourishing ourselves that, you know, with different diets and, and different disciplines. And uh, many of us have schooled ourselves in all kinds of information from all kinds of reputable sources about nutrition and have made our individual choices and what if um, not only was the government providing nutritional guidelines, but the government was providing nutritional mandates to say, this is how you need to eat. And um, those guidelines, based on your research, uh, were not so effective for you personally. And in, in your choice to follow your nutritional guidelines that you have researched and responsibly, um, responsibly chosen, uh, what if you were being told that that's not an okay <clears throat> choice that you needed to you needed to comply with this, this mandate or you would not be able to go to restaurants or you would not be able to go to school or you would not be able to work at your job. It, it's, there, this is a concern, right? It's a concern when um, our individual liberties as to what we put in our bodies in terms of nourishment and nutrition and health is is co-opted by a um, by an institution right and the thing the thing that we get to look at is um, we've been talking this week about, training fleas and, um, you know, how, how we become uh, indoctrinated into certain beliefs and practices that, um, that then we stop questioning, you know, that, that we just accept as truth that that this is the way things should be and um i i think we get to look at this a bit more deeply it's really not a black and white issue particularly if let's say there were certain vitamins that i was being told i had to take on a regular basis or or I was told, okay, take this vitamin and it's going to be good for you for life. And then it turns out, oh no, um, you need to take a, a booster vitamin. Um, and you need to take this booster vitamin maybe every three months 
or maybe every six months. And, and I'm going to track whether or not you've taken that booster vitamin. And if you don't take that booster vitamin, then you're not going to be able to go to restaurants or school or work, for example. And um, I, I think it's very, very important to look at where, where do we say, well, wait a second, this isn't okay. You know, um, and so in this, to get back to our topic, um, this is an example of how um, it can actually be dangerous to be speaking out about, about things that are important to us. It can be dangerous because we can be calling down a rain of social attack on social media, on um, other platforms. Uh, we can be calling down a rain of physical attack where people actually issue threats, um, you know, to people's homes and, and, and beyond, you know, to where people camp out, for instance. I mean, if we look at, um, there's so many polarizing issues. You know, we're not, it's it's not an isolated instance. I mean, we can we can look at racial issues. We can look at at um, reproductive uh, rights issues. We can look at medical issues. We can you know th there is so much polarity happening. The question is, if we don't speak out, if we don't find ways to communicate with each other reasonably and rationally, if we don't find ways to respect individual rights and, and uh, the welfare of the collective together, um, if, we, if we don't find a way to hold the both and, we're in deep, deep trouble. Um, and I think that there are lots of indicators that that that's what's happening. Hold on one second. Maggie is um, is doing her marauding thing. Sometimes that's the price of having having a um, a feathered friend joining us is that she she requires some, a little bit of monitoring sometimes. So. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I wonder if you have confronted situations where you've spoken out in the face of potential opposition. I, I read something not that long ago, and I, I don't know that I'm going to be quoting it accurately, but it was really, really fascinating about uh, how, um, how people are kind of wired to agree, and in this in this study, um, thank you. Pat says there's a lot of this big brother attitude going on, huge, and it's very alarming. So I, you know what? I'm gonna forget about this study for a second. Hopefully, I'll remember to come back to it. But there was a law just passed in Texas, and it was an anti-abortion law passed in Texas. And the thing about this law that makes it incredibly insidious is that rather than uh, dealing with law enforcement and uh, lawmakers, what it does is it empowers citizens to report other citizens. And this is something that happens in fascistic kinds of environments to allow other citizens to report on people who perform abortions, but not only perform abortions, but who aid, quote unquote, aid and abet anyone seeking an abortion. 
So that means, for instance, per chance, somebody who would be driving somebody to take to have an abortion or somebody who might be advising someone of their options to have an abortion. Now, I can I can say that it's not a relevant conversation for me personally anymore, but I can say that personal reproductive freedoms of choice have always been something that, again, freedom being one of my highest values, has, has been a personal choice and should be honored as such, in my opinion. This is my opinion and only my opinion, um, or, but I have very strong conviction about that. Good morning, good morning, Lisa. Welcome, welcome. So it's interesting, you know, like this is a place where I I believe that it's uh, that our individual choice is really critically important and most often not taken lightly, right? And yet here, this law um, is with it is a six week abortion law, meaning you can have an abortion up to the sixth week of pregnancy where people don't often don't even know that they're pregnant by six weeks. So, um, and, and so this, it's insidious in multiple ways. First is that uh, the time frame is, is a, a tremendously restrictive time frame. Second, the, the part that is most horrifying and and concerning because it may set a precedent for other laws that are um, that are put in place is that it is an it is an encouragement for citizens to bring suit against other citizens. So what it's doing is it is creating a big brother environment where people are policing and reporting other people. This is something that happened in Nazi Germany. This is something that, that was relied upon in that regime. And we get to pay attention to this people. This is really, 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 really important. Um, so Lisa says, uh, they want the right to choose to get the V, but a woman shouldn't, such hypocrisy. So I think, I think that, um, that we do see hypocrisy. And, and I also want to be really cautious about painting vast swaths of people with the same brush that, you know, maybe maybe I believe in the right to reproductive um, freedoms. I believe in the right to choose. Um, and maybe I also believe in the right to get the V or not. You know, like we can't, we can't assume that it's not, it's not, um, it doesn't serve any of us to paint vast swaths of people with a, a one brush because what happens there is that we lose the opportunity for creating creating um communication and communion and connectedness you know there's so much divisiveness that exists right now that we we get to be vigilant about our, our projected prejudices because there are there are enclaves of groups that you know like I, I have seen that there are enclaves of groups for instance that um, that tend to be um, anti-choice and also pro-death penalty you know so anti-abortion I mean yeah anti-abortion and pro-death penalty. I, I don't know how to reconcile that, you know, um, but the same thing with the, um, with the, uh, the V and, and um, abortion rights. So, and there are, there are groups that, you know, hold these collective um, 
kinds of perspectives. The thing is that um, there may be ways when we can create bridges, when we can have conversations, there may be ways that we can at least come to an understanding of each other, that we can, that we can find a way to um, transcend our, our prejudices. Um, and, and I, um, I, I am hopeful that that's the case, but I can't say that I found that. I mean, I have, good morning, good morning, Dennis. So good to have you here. We're talking about political correctness and the dangers of speaking out and, and the importance of speaking out, that we get to have the clarity within ourselves to, to maintain our center um, when without without attack to find to find a place of respectfulness for another another person you know to to be looking at the bigger picture and to say for instance with the example of the vitamins that I talked about, you know, let's say we're, we're told that we have to have, we have to take this vitamin and then, and um, it's recorded and we have a vitamin passport. And when we have this vitamin passport, then we're told, well, wait a second. Now you've got to get a booster vitamin every month. And if your, if your passport goes out of date, then all these restrictions are going to rain down on you. I mean, it's it's different, you know, like when you first thought that you were just taking the one vitamin, it was like, okay, I'll do that. I'm good with that. You know, I believe that that might be helpful to me. But then all of a sudden, now you have to take a vitamin booster every three months. And maybe now you have to take it every month. And, and your papers are going to be updated accordingly and your rights and your access to services are going to be restricted based on that what does that look like and is it something that you still feel aligned with is it something that's still okay um you know like where is the line so lisa says abortion is not for me but i should have the right to choose i'm with you lisa that's my that's my perspective as well I'm old enough to remember women getting illegal abortions and dying. It was awful. SCOTUS is on a slippery slope. I, I agree 100%. Um, this, the, the abortion law in Texas is meeting with a lot of, of, um, of um, protest, uh, but if and when it goes to the Supreme Court, we have a uh, very conservative Supreme Court and we get to, uh, as you said, SCOTUS is on a slippery slope. So it's, it's a little, it's a little, more than a little concerning. Rosalind says with 9-11 anniversary approaching anti-government, anti-authority can now be categorized as domestic terrorism and national threat per an August 13th, 2021 bulletin issued by the US Department of Homeland Security. Well, that is, that is pretty concerning, Rosalind. I wasn't aware of this, but the thing that is concerning about that is what gets interpreted as anti-government and anti-authority, right? Like we are, we are sliding into, into some um, scary, scary territory at a pretty rapid rate. And we get to look at these signals of um, the rise of authoritarianism. And it's, it's really, really important. And that's where this whole issue of political uh, correctness 
needs to be addressed you know and and what we're seeing is if what you're saying is so Roslyn that that there's even more potential danger to speaking out because who's going to decide what's anti-government what's anti-authority and as we're having laws that are enabling people to report on other people and and bring litigation against people whether it's justified or not there's a political structure in play that can be really, really ominous. And Lisa says, Texas is the first step to overturning Roe versus Wade. Actually, it's not the first step, unfortunately. It's, it is a, a huge step, but um, the, the appointment to the Supreme Court of some of the justices was, were more, um, were earlier steps toward that for sure. And there have been all kinds of um, abortion laws that or anti-abortion laws that have been um, being, being um, developed or in, in, um, entrenched for years leading up to the extreme of this law in Texas. And, um, it's, it is something that is alarm worthy because what we're doing is we are reg regulating people's rights to their own bodies. And this is a precedent then that goes into this whole B conversation, you know, is do I have the right to make choices about my body? And I know that part of the conversation is social well-being and impacting the well-being of the greater whole. And we, we get to look at this very, very, very carefully because, again, it's a slippery slope. You know, if we talk about these vitamin passports, for instance, you know, what, what does it look like when when booster booster vitamins get legislated you know what what does it look like when we are constantly under the um the eye of a power that has the capacity and um and the legal strength to prohibit access to to fundamental services potentially. This is, this is important. This is time for us to wake up and speak up. This is time to not be politically correct. You know, this is time to, to be standing up because if not now, it, it's got potential to be too late. This is serious stuff, people, really. Um, Roslyn posted the National Terrorism Advisory System Bulletin from August 13th, 2021 from Homeland Security. Um, everybody, I, I'm going to check out that link and I would suggest that you might want to be doing that as well to be looking at. Um, okay, so I, I'm going to read the summary to us. The Secretary of Homeland Security has issued a new terrorism advisory system bulletin regarding the current heightened threat environment across the United States. The Homeland continues to face a diverse and challenging threat environment leading up to and following the 20th anniversary of the September 11th, 20, 2001 attacks, as well religious holidays we assess could serve as a catalyst for acts of targeted violence. Okay, so um, the, the uh, anniversary of September 11th and upcoming religious holidays, holidays could serve as a catalyst for acts of targeted violence. These threats include those posed by domestic terrorists, individuals and groups engaged in grievance-based violence, and those inspired or motivated by foreign terrorists and other malign foreign influences. 
These actors are increasingly exploiting online forums to influence and spread violent extremist narratives and promote violent activity. Such threats are also exacerbated by impacts of the ongoing global pandemic, including grievances over public health safety measures and perceived government restrictions. Wow. So interesting, um, I, I would suggest to everyone that you read the rest of that bulletin. Thank you for that, Roslyn. Um, there's a lot in there, right? There are extremist groups. We can look at what happened in the Capitol on January 6th. Um, and there are these groups that are willing to re, um, re result or resort to violence. Um, the, I guess the question is, where is the line? You know, where is the line between free speech and, and domestic be, being characterized as a domestic terrorist? I don't know. Um, I, I, I have a concern because I've seen um, when we saw what was happening with Black Lives Matters demonstrations that were often very peaceful, uh, devolving into um, attacks from from authorities, you know, there or, or uh, ac accelerated violence through the interaction of authorities. There, this is this is something that we get to pay attention to and and um, stand up around, you know, that we get to speak out, you know, to exercise our rights of free speech while we still have them. And um, yeah, uh, that's scary stuff, Rosalind. I appreciate you sharing it. And, and I hope that I, in reading it, we get to find that there is a clear line between um, our rights to protest uh, and what is what is interpreted as violence. Um, we I, I don't I don't know what to say. You know, I think that I understand the pressures to be politically correct. And I also know that that is uh, the the political correctness and the, and the polite conversation is potentially something that is is um, where we're kind of self-limiting in in our ability to um, create a positive influence on the trend of things. So I don't I don't mean to be a downer, but I think that this is a call to action, a call to speaking out, a call to being in touch with our um, legislators, to being uh, in touch with our organizations, that we get to we get to participate in the direction of our country, and um, as as responsible citizens, that's an, that's part of our mandate. You know, is to be participating members of our of our society and and i i really do believe that that also means building bridges and um finding finding ways to communicate with and beyond our differences to find a way to um come to some kind of respectful consensus i i don't i don't know I have moments when I don't know if that's possible. Uh, and, and we need to try, we need to try. So um, yeah, let's, let's look at the bigger picture. Let's look at what it means to surrender our rights, uh, our, our autonomy you know, to, to um, acquiesce to tracking and, and um, yeah, so I've said it, 
I've said it, and so maybe I'm not being politically correct, but I think that this is a warning flag for all of us. And I don't, regardless of what your position is on the given issues, recognize that there is a, a larger collective and a larger, a larger, um, a larger freedom that is at stake here for everyone regardless of our beliefs. And um, that if there, if there is a um, mandated control of one, that mandated control uh, extends to the many. And Kimberly, good morning, good morning. It's been an intense conversation this morning that that you're now joining, uh, but you might want to go back and listen. And um, this is this is a call to action, a call for all of us to to educate ourselves, to be communicating responsibly, and it's from a place of being informed and looking at the bigger picture. Because whether whether I agree or not, that that um, you know you should or shouldn't be doing something uh, when we start looking at the way that that should and shouldn't is enforced, we get to look at how it, it that how it potentially impacts everybody down the line and and look at what it means to tacitly comply with with uh with laws and um mandates without objection uh that that are really um that have very very dark consequences for the group the um society as a whole and uh yeah so not the lightest morning um but there's there are causes for us all to be waking up and exercising our our rights to freedom of speech and um peaceful protest and um yeah so the future is ours to make and uh with that that's it for this morning i'm mira rubin this is the core connection and I go live each weekday morning here on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page. I invite you to enjoy the remarkable community here on Enlightened World Network. I don't know that anybody is, uh, that other folks are speaking out about this in this way, but um, Rosalind says, I want to be healthy and free. So do I, so do I. And um, I think that that is probably the call that most of us align with is that we all want to be healthy and free. And um, that may look different ways to different people. How, and, and we get to educate ourselves around that and also um, educate our, our uh, lawmakers and <clears throat> uh, learn more, learn more. And, and if it, yeah, I mean, I, it's a hairy topic. It's a really hairy topic. And I would love to be able to just have a purely candid conversation about it. And unfortunately, um, the, the atmosphere is such that we are being constrained to, um, to limit our own our own conversation even. And I'm I'm suggesting that there are ways that we can have these conversations uh, that that are responsible and respectful. And um, yeah, sometimes we get to choose the higher value. Anyway. Um, I think that's it for today. Every now and then we just dive into the intensity of what's happening. 
um, maybe we could create an offline forum to have these conversations and to create to create a um, a coalition of understanding, which would be awesome. Oh, awesome. So healthy and free is on Telegram. Thank you, Rosalind. That sounds like a really cool, uh, cool place to be able to have some of these conversations. I can, I just went there and it says healthyandfree.com is, oh, it went to a website. It's not on Telegram. So I guess we have to get on Telegram and then look at, look for healthy and free. Um, so, uh, okay, it's US, healthyandfree.us, awesome. And Dennis says, I concur with anyone who says PC is run amok. I agree, I agree. What it is, is, is an atmosphere of fear. And, um, you know, I, we walk a delicate line and that in and of itself is concerning, right? That, that we have to be, uh, careful, especially in, in this particular venue, uh, be alert to what, what words we use and, and what we, uh, what kinds of, um, even what kinds of resources and information is available. It's crazy. It, it's just crazy. Anyway, with that, uh, we will call it a day. And I have so much love for you and, and appreciation. And um, I, I'm so grateful to having having the opportunity to be talking about the things that we do together and it means the world and we get to keep talking and it's it's so 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 important and love and peace to you too kimberly and to all of us we get to preserve that it uh, freedom freedom is a privilege and we say in this country, it's a right, but that right is being challenged on so many fronts and um, we get to preserve it. So, so much love to you all until next time.